Hello students. Today we are going to discuss the chapter Force and Laws of Motion. Force, what is meant by force? Already you learned in lower classes. But now we will see what is the actual concept of force. Lower classes you learn force means push or pull. Let us see what is actually force. According to Galileo, a body in motion continue its motion in the absence of force. Newton formulated Galileo's observation and explained the laws of motion. Effects of force when you apply force on an object, what happens to the object? An object at rest starts to move. The shape of the object sometimes changes. So, what are the effects of force? Make the object to move from rest. Change the speed of a moving object. Change the direction of motion of the object. Change the shape of the object force. Force is a push or a pull acting on an object which tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion or the direction of motion or the shape and size of the object. It is balanced and unbalanced force. Here one example is here that is tug of war. You all know what is tug of war. The winner will pull the other team to his side. Here, this is the case of an unbalanced force because which team will be the winner, that team apply more force. If the net force acting on an object is not equal to zero, that is the case of unbalanced force. Here another example. Two persons, they are applying force from opposite directions. One is applying 200 Newton towards right. Other one is applying 100 Newton towards left. That is the net force on this box. That is 100 Newton towards right. So this box will move in the right direction. So in the case of unbalanced force the net force is not equal to zero. Unbalanced force produces motion. Next is balanced force. See here that here with both hands applied force on the brick. That means the net force on the brick is zero and the, the brick will not move. So this is the case of a balanced force. Here another example is here. The left, from the left hand, the brick is pushing. That means the brick will move in the right direction. From the right hand, the brick is move, pushing. That means the brick will move in the left direction. Every time the movement or motion is possible in the direction of larger force and unbalanced force produces motion. Next, what is the difference between unbalanced force and balanced force? Unbalanced force can move an object at rest. Balanced force do not change the state of rest of an object. Unbalanced force can change the state of motion of the object Balanced force do not change the state of motion of an object. Unbalanced force produces acceleration or deceleration. That means when the speed of the object increases, so it becomes accelerated. When the body suddenly stopped, suppose one ball is rolling on the ground, after some time it stopped. So it is the case of decelerated motion. But in the case of balanced force, they do not produce any acceleration. The unbalanced force can change the direction of motion, but balanced force cannot change the direction of motion. 
the resultant of all the forces acting on the object is not zero in the case of unbalanced force in the case of balanced force the net force acting on the object is zero next topic is galileo's experiment after that we will discuss first law of motion a mark say here here two inclined planes are here the inclination of both the planes are same galileo dropped a marble piece from the top of the first inclined plane it rolled from the first plane and rolled up to the second plane to the same height this is schematically represented here then what he did he decreases the inclination of the second inclined plane when he decreases the inclination of the second plane to reach the same height the this marble has to cover more distance again he decreases the inclination then what happened the marble travel more distance to reach the same height of here the inclination of the plane come to zero the marble roll down from the inclined plane and continue to move on the horizontal plane as long as it may be according to galileo in the absence of unbalanced external force a body in motion continue its motion a body at rest continue its state of rest that means in the absence of external and balanced force there is no acceleration takes place it will remain unaccelerated next topic is laws of motion here we are going to discuss newton's first law of motion Uh, from the observation of galileo newton formulated his first law that is we have seen that an object at rest continues its state of rest or an object in motion continues its state of motion in the absence of external unbalanced force this is newton's first law an object continue its state of rest or uniform motion unless it is compelled by an external unbalanced force that is first law of motion this law is having three parts that is an object continue to be at rest unless some external force act on it that means uh, when an object is at rest when we are not applying any external force on it it should be in rest only the same way when the object is in motion because a ball is rolling on the ground the ball continue its motion till the external force acting on it why the ball gets stopped after some time because frictional force that is the external force it stops the ball third point is an object continues to move along the straight line unless some external force compels it to change the direction without the application of external and balanced force an object will not change its direction so these are the main three parts of the first law then the first law an object continue to be at rest an object continue to be in motion and the object itself it cannot change its state so this defines one important physical quantity in physics that is inertia inertia is the inability of the object to change by itself its state of rest or uniform motion first law importance is that first law define force and inertia first part of the first law tells us that what is force how can you define force 
force is that property which changes or tends to change the state of rest or uniform motion then what is inertia inertia is the inability of the object to change by itself its state of rest or uniform motion next we are going to discuss about what is meant by inertia and what are the different types of inertia what is inertia i told you it is the inability of the body to change by itself the state of rest or uniform motion we have three types of inertia inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction we will discuss one by one first one is inertia of rest here the tendency of the body to continue the state of rest here coin is placed over this card and this is placed on a glass when you flick this card the coin goes down that means uh, the coin has the tendency to continue its a state of rest it is not moving with the card the same way you can say that when the bus starts suddenly used to fall backward why because the lower portion of your body it moves with the bus but the upper portion still has the tendency to continue the state of rest that is why you are moving back next is inertia of motion what is inertia of motion it is the tendency of the object to continue its state of motion see here when the bus suddenly stopped what happened you moves forward you fall forward what is the reason because you know that the upper portion of the body moves with the bus but the bus stopped the lower portion of the body comes to rest so the upper portion still has the tendency to move forward that is why the upper portion moves forward and you know that seat belt is very compulsory in the vehicle the reason is that when the uh, vehicle is suddenly stopped then what happened the same thing may, uh, means uh, the uh, driver can move forward and sometimes serious injury also he may get to avoid that it is told to wear seat belts of direction the inability of the body to change by itself the direction of motion when a car moves round a curve the person sitting inside a car thrown outwards in order to maintain his direction of motion otherwise you know that when uh, the driver is taking sharp turns the passengers are thrown outwards this is also the example of inertia of direction inertia of direction means the inability of a body to change by itself its direction of motion what is the relation between inertia and mass mass is a measure of inertia inertia describes an object resistance to change the motion so which would be more difficult to push you know that elephant because in elephant is having more mass so it is having more inertia you know that uh, suppose an elephant is chasing you how will you escape from the elephant you can move in a zigzag manner that means the elephant is very heavy so it cannot change its direction very fast so you will be escaped from that inertia concept mass the more mass an object has the greater its inertia and the more force it takes to change its state of motion mass is the measure of the inertia of an object here few questions are given go through these questions and find out the answer